Okay, let's call to order the Village of Riverside, Illinois Planning and Zoning Commission regular meeting for Monday, November 23rd, 2020. Please call the, call the roll. Chairperson Mateo. I'm here. Commissioner May. Here. Commissioner Marhul. Here. Commissioner Miller. Here. Commissioner Pelletier. Here. Commissioner Matthews. Here. Absent is Commissioner Hennigan. Um, Chairperson Mateo, we do have some formalities we do have to do about this being a Zoom meeting and <clears throat> the governor's orders and all that kind of stuff. If you're okay with me taking us through that. Please do. Okay. So since the governor has um, instituted a public health emergency and has put through an executive order making some changes to the Open Meetings Act. We are allowed to have this meeting conducted electronically instead of in person, um, provided that certain qualifications are made. The first one being that there is a governor's order of the public health emergency. The second being that the village president has made a determination that it is in the best interest in public health um, for us to do these meetings electronically rather than in person. Um, President Sells has made that determination. <clears throat> Therefore, we are having the meeting done electronically. What I do need to do with each of you is make sure that you have heard me and understood me um, so that we can make sure everybody hears each other and then we can continue on with the meeting. So I will call on each of you and ask you if you heard and understood um, regarding this being an electronic meeting and that you can actually hear me. We will again at the end of the meeting to make sure that you have heard and participated and understood what happened in the meeting. I will call on all of you at the end of the meeting again, <clears throat> pardon me, and before we adjourn. Okay, so I will take us through that. So, um, Commissioner May? Yes, I heard you. Thank you. Commissioner Pelletier? I heard and understood you. Thank you. Commissioner Matthews? Heard and understood. Thank you. Commissioner Markle? Heard and understood. Thank you. Commissioner Miller? Yes, I heard you and I understood. <laughs> and Chairperson Mateo? Heard and understood. Thank you, everybody. Now we can proceed. So if we're all in quiet spaces, I think it's okay to leave our um, audio on, not having to mute. Um, but if we, if that changes, I might suggest that um, we might need to mute our, our audio. Also, if you look at the upper right of your screen, it should say speaker view. We want to keep it that way. Um, we're actually in gallery view. If you clicked on speaker view, you would go to speaker view. So we want to stay in the Brady Bunch format. Um, so try to keep speaker view up in the upper right corner. All right, uh, we don't have any visitors currently. Um, our mm -hmm. board liaison is not here. Um, is there any update from the board? Um, I don't think we've had anything since our last meeting. Um, we, we had the text amendment for the garages and driveways. And so that did pass, uh, the village board did adopt that. So. Um, <clears throat> those changes um, are being codified. And I think that's really the only update I have from the village board at this point. And we wish Director Bailey a happy retirement. Oh yes, and Director Bailey is now retired. Uh, we have no new business. Moving on to old business, a continued discussion regarding allowing habitable space above detached mm -hmm. garages and in coach houses and giving recommendations to the village board. Yeah, Actually, sure. I think we need to vote on the minutes. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm just tearing right through this, this meeting. Uh, is there a motion to approve the Planning and Zoning Commission regular meeting and public hearing minutes of September 23rd, 2020? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any edits? All in favor? Oh. Aye. Aye. Sorry. Aye. Electronically, it has to be an individual voice vote. So I'm going to have to call Please the call roll. So, Commissioner May? Aye. Commissioner Marhul? Aye. Commissioner Miller? Aye. Commissioner Pelletier? Aye. Commissioner Matthews? Aye. Chairperson Mateo? Aye. All right, motion passes. Thank you for catching that. If we have another Zoom meeting, I will print out the agenda and we don't go through that again. <laughs> okay, now moving on to the old business and discussion of uh, habitable space above attached garages. Yes, so at our last meeting in September, 
<clears throat> we started talking about allowing habitable space above um, detached garages. Um, this came up at a village board meeting and was presented by trustee Gisa um, stating that with um, a lot of people being forced to work from home and children being at home doing school, that it might be a good idea to start looking at um, allowing those spaces to be converted <clears throat> above garages or to create additional space above garages for people to have additional home office or, or usable space. Um, the board did express some concerns about enforcement and visitors and home occupations, but they did ask for the commission to kind of uh, discuss it some more and, and come back with some sort of recommendation on it um, to see if we'd be pursuing any sort of text amendments related to this. So at your meeting in September, um, there were some concerns about allowing this on additional um, commercial use of, of the area and kind of enforcement and things like that. And ultimately, um, the commission did ask for a little bit of extra information so we could kind of flesh out that discussion a little bit. Um, so I did provide you with the home occupation and accessory building and garage regulations from LaGrange and Hinsdale, um, as well as the villages regulations. Um, those are two other communities in the area that do allow um, habitable spaces to be built out above um, detached garages, um, not necessarily as dwelling units. That's not allowed. Um, however, it does, you know, allow for there to be kind of a finished space that could be, you know, additional habitable <clears throat> area. Um, so we have that additional information for you. Um, we did another question was how many coach houses are there and how many are landmarked? Um, back in 2000, they did an inventory of this and there were 28 coach houses back then. Um, of those coach houses, only 13 of them are actually designated as local historic landmarks. Um, so the rest of them are coach houses, but they don't have that designation. So they don't necessarily have um, the ability by right to have um, a dwelling unit above um, their, <clears throat> or habitable space above their, um, their garage in the coach house. Um, so basically what we're looking for from you is to provide us with some feedback on allowing these sort of office areas above detached garages um, and the potential for a text amendment. Um, your recommendation, if you're prepared to make one tonight, would go to the village board and then they would determine whether or not we should move forward with um, a formal text amendment process. Does anybody have specific questions for Director App? Sure. Sonia, Director Apt, when there is a coach house that is not grandfathered in and is not suitable or permissible as use as a separate dwelling unit, are there any restrictions on the remaining use, shall we call it, of that space? So that's somewhat regulated by our non-conforming use. So if it's not currently occupied, <clears throat> as a dwelling unit, it's not allowed to be occupied by a dwelling unit, but the area is finished. Um, it has been considered grandfathered in that it's area that can continue to be utilized. However, it cannot be utilized as a dwelling unit. Okay, so it's basic, to, if I can summarize, mm -hmm. it's usable as extra floor space by the primary owner of the property. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So a landmark coach house can have a home office with a bath. A non-landmarked coach house can have a home office, but no bath. And a garage can have a home office on the ground floor without a bath, but it cannot currently put a home office above the parking area. Correct. So we would allow <clears throat> an addition onto a garage. So if somebody wanted to expand their garage area to create a workshop or a home office area, they could do that. Um, but obviously they couldn't make it into a dwelling unit. So we certainly wouldn't allow a bathroom to be, to be added to that area. Um, the code specifically prohibits any sort of habitable space above a detached garage. So somebody could not convert the attic space, for lack of a better word, um, above their garage to be able to create the office with or without a bathroom currently. And we had ex extensive discussion aided with Commissioner May about the structural refinements that would be necessary to make it habitable. 
which basically it's a lot. It would be rather expensive in order to find any good way to make it a, a usable space. Is that a good summary, Sean? I was talking to a colleague of mine who's dug into this a little bit in uh, Wilmette, and he said that the residential code is not as stringent as the commercial building code, which I'm, I'm much more used to. Uh, the commercial building code doesn't require the, the separation as long as this is just a, a home office that uh, in looking through the Hinsdale and LaGrange summaries, that's basically what it is, but it's, it's not for seeing patients, it's not for uh, meetings, it's, it's basically just more or less a, a desk space for the person who lives within the house. So therefore it's not really subject to, you know, multiple exits and uh, two hour separation the way that if you put an actual office uh, designated business space, you would need that separation. So you're, you're very limited to what you can actually do with something like this. And I think 600 square feet is what I keep seeing pop up. Uh, no toilets, uh, one employee maximum. Uh, it seems like it's, it's more or less just an extension of your house. <clears throat> My understanding is that uh, Trustee Gisa's original proposition was that this is limited to building out above garage spaces. Is that right? That was his idea, yes. So I think this is related to what Commissioner May was saying. I mean, most garage spaces, you probably couldn't build out above them because they simply wouldn't have the head space. They wouldn't be safe under the building code. Is that correct? Yeah, so you, you, you basically need to completely rebuild your garage to make this work, um, to, to give it a live load and give it an actual space up there, you're, you'd need to do a lot. Meaning oh, either pardon. lowering the floor, raising the roof? Uh, remove the roof, re reinforce the structure, basically like you're, you're popping the top on a, a bungalow more or less. I want to chime in here that Trustee Pollock has joined us. Thank you. So I wonder if Trustee Gisa had some specific cases in mind where someone had a garage that actually had a floor on, you know, above the parking area with stairs. I, I don't know enough houses in Riverside, but maybe there are some garages that fit those standards so it'd be easy to just move up there and start put up a desk and a light and start working i think he just kind of had his own experience which was that he had a coach house that was not landmarked but did have that finished space above there and so yeah. it was he he was able to use that and thought it would be good for other people to be able to have that kind of space um and he knew that hinsdale um, allowed those kind of conversions so in hinsdale um, according to attorney Mars, who's also the village attorney for, for Hinsdale, they have a lot of new construction where people will be building garages with that additional space above it. So I think in his eyes was, is that something that, you know, our, you know, residents could be able to do to be able to, you know, provide for that additional space and would it, you know, and, and some of his remarks were, would it help make Riverside more, um, attractive to, um, new families? Et cetera, looking for for homes in the village, and would that perhaps increase property values for people if they were able to get that additional space um, above their garages? How many actual inquiries have you had to do this kind of work, except for the man who wanted to put the parking park his car above in the okay. elevator, or whatever? I have not had anybody ask about putting an office above. I have had a couple of inquiries about um, being able to create a dwelling unit above a detached garage, um, but I've never had one ask specifically just about a home office. I have had since I've been here over the past six years, maybe a handful of permits come in for people getting um, putting additions onto their existing garages so they can create workshops or yoga studios or um, you know I think there was an architect that kind of created their studio on, on the back of their 
back of the garage to things like that. So I'd say I've had maybe four or five at most um, permits for those kind of um, additions onto garages. N one was, I think, a whole new garage. So it was a brand new garage that got built um, to provide both the garage space and that additional um, yoga studio space. I think that one was. So. Uh, so, I, you, you, you know, to me, there's there's absolutely nothing compelling in this new information that would change my mind from last time. Um, you, you know, we're, we're talking about a couple of different things here. I mean, first off, if you want to go set up a desk in your garage, you can set up a desk in your garage. And there's nothing to you. You, you, you know, you, you might freeze to death, um, but you can do it. Um, you can also build an addition to the side of your garage as long as it comports with the coverage requirements, which is, I mean, I'm no architect or builder, but it's, I think, much, much simpler to knock a hole in a wall and build a bump out than build up. Um, the other issue, too, I think that, to, to me, the most compelling, well, there's two compelling issues. The, the, the first is that it would require, like, more, I think, I mean, maybe just a tax amendment, but I also think we'd need to revise the zoning code to allow increased heights on garages for this because you're there's no way you're going to get in i mean i think they're requiring I, I forget what it is 16 feet now maybe i maybe there's kind of all over the place i think of, i am but it's going to need to be a lot a lot higher so there's going to be that and then the other compelling interest is just um you know the, the, these are going to end up as dwellings um you're, you're going to have people living above garages and i you know people can say they never will they will and I, I just think there's nothing has changed. I've seen no new evidence that this is a good thing for the village. I've seen no new evidence that people actually want to do it, which I think we should take into account. And I, I just don't see any reason to go down this road at this point. I'll second what John says, unless we're going to change garage heights, which 12 foot, wall heights on the side of the garage, 16 feet at the peak. We would have to make a lot more changes to make this viable. And as John says, so far I see no reason to make building above one's garage a habitable space. I see no reason to do that because it's not necessary. I think there's enough other options out there for additional space that don't require us to make text amendment changes to our code. Other commissioners? Yeah, I, I, think, I think the, the best bang for your buck is really put an addition onto the side of your house or knock out the side of your garage and build out. I, it's, it's really, I, I don't understand why you'd want to build above a garage if you didn't have to. Um, it's it's money that's basically sunk that you could spend better elsewhere. Commissioner Pelletier, Commissioner Miller. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't, I don't see any compelling reason either. Um, in looking at the codes, the different codes that were provided to us, the only real difference I see between ours and either Hinsdale's or Lagrange is that we specifically state that you can only use the area above the parking spaces as storage. The thing that's really limiting is the height restrictions. Um, their height restrictions are maybe a little different than ours, but really not that significantly. So um, I would, I'm definitely not in favor of changing the height restrictions on our garages. I don't think we wanna start having two-story garages. Um, so I would entertain removing that storage requirement if that if there are some you know cases within the village where that would allow someone to put a small space above the parking spaces. But beyond that, I don't I don't think that it's a good idea um, to make any other changes in order to <clears throat> accommodate um, a, a space above the garage. I agree with everyone. I think here that it doesn't seem to be a good reason to open it up, which you would have to to allow this to be 
you know, safe to start allowing people to build out above their parking spaces, you'd you'd have to change the code to allow that to be done safely. Okay. I guess you have a recommendation. I guess to summarize, the commission does not feel that there is a compelling reason to change the code as it currently is. Um, and they're definitely not in favor of changing the bulk requirements that would allow for a taller detached garage. That's a good summary. Yeah. I agree. And I would also just add that, again, the variation procedure is always available here. If for some reason someone was not able to expand the ground floor of their garage and had to go up to build office space and could make that case, then the variation procedures are there for that purpose. That's true. Do you need more from us on that? No, I think that's good. Okay. Uh, do you have any information? Um, we are putting together the schedule of meetings for 2021. So I will be emailing that out to you. I think we're kind of sticking with that status quo of trying to do uh, in um, November and December trying to do a Monday meeting, either the week we normally would have the Wednesday meeting or a Monday meeting the week before that. Um, so be on the lookout for that to come through and let me know if there's any date changes or one would work better than the other. I think we typically don't do the third Wednesday because that conflicts with D96 regular <laughs> meetings. So that's why we're typically doing a Monday on um, in November and December. Our next meeting is December 21st, I want to 21st. say. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to get the DPW antenna um, on that if I can get our structural um, engineer people uh, with the, the tower to be able to be at that meeting. So we're trying to move forward with that. Um, I will obviously let you know whether or not, but if you can try and keep your calendar to the third meeting, I am, I am trying to get that on the um, antenna. That would be a public hearing. Yes, it would. Okay. So, and that one will be a little bit more involved because I know the village board wanted the commissioners and the public to be able to see um, the tap, you know, quote unquote, the tower where it would be. So um, we have <clears throat> the fire department can extend their ladder up and, and have it up. But given the time of year that we're at, it's not like it's light out when right before the meeting would be that you'd be able to see it. So we'd have to arrange for a specific day during daylight hours that you guys would be able to view it. So trying to coordinate that as well um, to have that before the meeting. Yes? Is it possible that it could be arranged on a weekend? If it's going that's, to be that's kind of what I was thinking because during the weekdays, if people are at work, they're not going to be able to, to see it, so. That's what I'm going to be coordinating with Public Works and the um, and the Fire Department on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody have other questions or thoughts? Okay. Well, you did fade out a little bit there, Director App. So let's go through our legal motions again before we adjourn. <laughs> yes. So again. Part of the governor's um, requirements for us being able to do this electronically is at the end of the meeting, we do confirm that everybody heard everything and understood what the ultimate um, actions were by, by the commission at the end of the meeting before we adjourn. So I will ask each of you individually if you were able to hear and understand the meeting and, and what transpired. And then from there, we can um, work through the motion to adjourn the meeting if we're ready to do that. So I will start with you, Commissioner Matthews. Heard and understood. Thank you. Commissioner Marhul. Heard and understood. Thank you. Commissioner Miller. Yes, I heard everything. I understood. 
Thank you, Commissioner Pelletier. Uh, yes, both heard and understood. And Commissioner May? Yes, heard and understood. Thank you, and Chairperson Mateo? Heard and understood. Thank you, everybody. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Please call the roll. Okay. Commissioner Matthews? Aye. Commissioner Marhul? Aye. Commissioner Pelletier? Aye. Commissioner May? Aye. Commissioner Miller? Aye. Chairperson Mateo? Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. Passes. Have a safe and happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you possibly on December 21st.